Hello and welcome to Talk About It, the official audio podcast series of Phenomenology Club. The past few uploads I've made for this series are basically just solo discussions I've been having on a variety of topics. Most of them are live streams, so please be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified as they happen or are uploaded. But also, as some of you may know, there is another thing that we do with this series where we basically go through as a club and have group discussions about the topics that we present in our various video uploads on this channel. So we've already done the first two and we're going through chronologically, retroactively, I may add, these discussions happen after the video uploads. Um, We're slowly catching up to the present. But this is our third group discussion about our third video upload, which is titled The Implicit Logical Bias of a Language. Um, The original upload for that video was actually very hard to hear. Apologies, I've actually just put a new upload on this channel. That is still a bit hard to hear, admittedly, but much more clearer. So there's a link in this description to a clear upload of that video if you would like to listen to it. There's also original music now under that video audio that was so graciously given to us by our club member Slime Mask instead of the previous music that was there before. I've included a link to Slime Mask SoundCloud in both this upload and that one. Um, And I've also included Slime Mask music under this audio upload because as you will see in just a moment when you listen to this video, um... (laughs) it uh becomes a bit stressful at times so i thought that maybe having a soundtrack would uh, make it a little less stressful maybe for the uh audience it's actually kind of funny because if you listen to this upload you'll hear in the beginning i'm basically describing while talking about this language e prime which i talk about in both the video and this upload but basically how arguments come to happen in the form they kind of take on. And ironically, wouldn't you know, we ended up having a pretty bitter argument in here (laughs) during this discussion, which I just find to be such a thoughtful illustration. Look at that. And the format of our argument basically follows to a T exactly what we say in the beginning about arguments so hey it's like it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy look at that but um you know as there was a lot of bitter arguing there was a lot of yelling volume changes uh so i decided that putting a little bit of music under a little bit of reverb and also just cutting out chunks of this shit (laughs) would do us would do everyone uh, a bit of good In the same vein, I ended up censoring out people's names because just the nature of what we were discussing and everyone yelling and being rude to each other, uh, myself included, I am ashamed of of how I ended up moderating this discussion. I think if you listen to it, you can see how I too give in to the anger, the anger that many of our participants seem to be feeling in this discussion. And I think because I give in to this anger, Then when I try to restore law and order to our group discussion, my authority is ignored. And I found this to be a very useful lesson, one that I will learn much from moving forward. I will learn not to become angry as I am the club moderator and it is my duty to moderate and to judge and rule over the land wisely and to be a wise and benevolent leader. Anyway. (laughs) Now that I've given you all this background info, hope you're not too scared, hope you listen to it anyway, it's a fun time. We covered some good topics, I put some time codes in the comments section to make it easier for anyone who just wants to skip around because there's a lot of bullshit in here. Um, And if you are interested in learning more about our club and becoming a member for only $1 a month, uh, check out the link in the description to our Patreon for Phenomenology Club and also our website, which is www.phenomenology.club. Let's talk about it. I'm up here listening to you talk. Yeah, sorry, my bad. No, you're not. I'm just glad you're here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our group discussion series called Talk About It. Well, the group discussion part of our series, Talk About It. This is a thing I started doing a while ago. Excuse me? 
Some <laughs> this is a thing we started a while ago, but haven't done it in a minute. So thanks so much for coming, where we basically just go through the videos that we have on the channel, just to serve as like discussion starters for us to have a group discussion together as a club where people, especially other than myself, can share input and we can have a nice little back and forth about these ideas and expand on them together and get deep and shit. So I'm so glad you guys are here. Some of you know each other, not all of you do. Um, maybe when you begin speaking, just introduce yourself with your name and where you're from real quick just so everyone can have like an introduction i think two people here are new right bub zubbly hey how are what you bub bub's bubbly where are you from what's your name tell us who you Hello. are my name's how how are you yeah. welcome i'm from jersey so yes <laughs> wait <laughs> hey bitch yes <laughs> I know you. Yes. What the fuck? I was waiting for you to tell me the password so I get on. <laughs> I told you the password. Oh my god, everyone, this is from New Jersey. We know each other IRL. She's an amazing painter and an amazing Thank person. Thank you. And she's Flatter. she saw a phenomenology club a uh, live lecture in the woods of New Jersey where she was totally blasted on acid. <laughs> So hard. Oh God. What color was the apple? Yo, okay. It was green. <laughs> my glasses made it red, so it was red for a very long time. Yes, and around. Oh, what? What? Shit. What is color? That's a question. To be <laughs> That's something I'm <laughs> wondering. That's such a good question. Uh, yeah. Oh my God! I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for coming. Okay, I'm so and then Adrian Sperm. Ugh. Bitch, why the fuck? I don't know. Keep going. Ignore me. Ugh. Just take Ugh. some acid and like fucking chill out. We're about yeah, to get. I'm nervous. We're about to get dumb deep in here. There's nothing we shut up. <laughs> I'm nervous. Is she she, she's gonna hit us if we if we act wrong. Guys, I'm ready? <laughs> please. Anyway, for the sake of anyone listening on YouTube, let me let me continue. KJ Sperm, are you are you here? Are you an active participant? <laughs> KJ Sperm. What the fuck was that? Was that KJ? <laughs> KJ? I'm here, bitch. <laughs> Hey, KJ, what do we call you? I've never spoken with you on the voice. Um, well, since we're alive, we're gonna call me Peaches. Peaches? Okay, and where are you from? Um, the corn. The what? The cornfield. Oh, damn, I like that. <laughs> Mysterious. Peaches from the cornfields. I think you're from. I feel like you said that once. All right, and then we have all our other people here um, like, from bitch. Ecuador. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna say my state on live. Oh, stop, please. You're you're giving us a fake name and shit. Your name's like sperm something. Are you here? Great. All the way from Ecuador. She's probably listening. I love this bitch. Anyway, let's start our conversation. Were you people able to watch this video? Even if you watched it a while ago, have have you people seen it? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I saw it. I saw it like a, I saw it like a while ago, and uh, I was trying to watch to catch up. But like I've been drinking like mimosas and shit all day. Oh like my, no. My last my last day of leave and shit. But yeah, like I think I remember like the like the. The general thrust of it well you're a really i mean you're already an expert at speaking in one of the ways that i talked about in this video and actually let me just say for anyone who isn't aware some of you may be aware what the fuck is that some of you may be aware that in our phenomenology channel we're trying to have more philosophical discussion and encourage more philosophical discussion at the moment so what i did was institute a temporary rule that we could only speak in there in e prime and this is a thing i talked about in the video and e prime is 
basically a language you could call it a psychological language because it's english but it just has extra rules and the rules are that you cannot use any forms of the verb to be or is and the purpose of doing this is so that basically the speaker or the speakers start to promote a general environment climate attitude where people are coming from this premise of basically stating like everything i'm saying is my own subjective in uh impression you know and i feel like this is a thing when you think about things like conflict resolution and stuff this is a thing that like people sort of naturally do already right like when you're in a fight with somebody like your fucking boyfriend or something and you're like you're a dick no you're a dick and then by the end of the conversation everyone's like i just felt like when you said that and that's crazy that you said you felt that way because Mm -hmm. i felt like You know what I'm saying? Like, conversations start with, like, you did that, and you are that, and you is that. And then at the end, like, you resolve by being like, I'm sorry, I felt this, and I felt that. E-prime is basically, like, going to the end of the conversation before you're even throwing these statements at each other that you're Mm -hmm. a fucking dick and you're a fucking dick. Mm -hmm. You can even say things like, I feel like you're a dick, but you cannot say you are a dick because R is a form of to be. Can you say you anyway. love dick? Of course. All right. All right. <laughs> so Boy. I just want to like open the floor. Um, let's try. I'm going to try to mediate. So I know some of you hosts said you're nervous. Don't be nervous, but try your best to stay in the spirit of philosophy and phenomenology. Otherwise, I will Pitch. yell at you. Finally, somebody give us a thought. What do you guys think about this? Do you think maybe let's start with this idea of E prime specifically? Do you think that this is stupid? Do you think it has any potential benefits? Give me a thought, someone. And when you start talking again, say your name and where you're from, just so everyone can get acquainted with each other. Uh, I'm a Vermanizer. I'm from uh, California. I think it's a great idea as far as like talking about I think pretty much anything that doesn't have to do with you personally and shit if you're trying trying to like have an objective like conversation about something like that then it's good because it's like it takes the uh, it takes the subjective standpoint out of the equation and stuff or at least or at least it accounts for it I should say that it accounts for it so Mm -hmm. I think it's a, I think it's good in like special usage and stuff like that. I'm going to fuck it up, <laughs> tell you the truth, because uh, whenever I, because I gotta fucking think about it, you know. <laughs> it's different than you, you talking about it and shit. You gotta think about it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna fuck I think it up. Speaking like, it is more difficult than typing yeah. it. But you think, did the best I'll, out of anyone in the chat. I mean, you wrote like a whole paragraph and it sounded completely natural. I was very. I don't impressed. think. I don't think that like I, I I don't think that uh that speaking it for me at least is like a big of a deal. But when I have to think about it, and when I go into the the channel, the phenomenology channel, and think about it, I'm like, ah shit, how am I gonna fucking? Break? So I don't, yeah, that's that's when it that's when it fucks me up and stuff. But naturally, yeah, I do like sort of uh talk about like I already told you like I'm in the army reserves and stuff but when i normally like try to like do stuff i usually try to do it democratically anyway so it's like naturally can you tell us what you meant by that because you mentioned that in the phenomenology chat that because you're in the army you feel like you already are in like a mode where you speak this way like why is that oh yeah yeah that's uh it's what they teach you how to when you like move up in like rank and shit they tell you to like speak um in the active voice, they tell you they speak actually the opposite of he, if he prime to like um, get away from any sort of ambiguity and stuff of like what you might mean. Is so that's is literally the opposite of like how you're told to speak, and it really fucks me up when I when I'm like uh, say I'm trying to like write an award or like I'm trying to write like a statement or something like that. Like it'll screw me up because my natural tendency is to like be objective when I try to talk. 
if that makes sense. That's crazy. So in the army, they tell you to speak less ambiguously. Like, can you give us well, an yeah, example it, it, of like well, a sentence that would be like? Do they give you an example? Well, it makes sense when you think about it because you're trying to like you're trying to give people directives and stuff like that. You're not trying to be like ambiguous. Like it may or may not be this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you're, <laughs> and you're like I just personally feel, in my opinion, my objective <laughs> opinion. <laughs> It's like, is this like you know, you're saying like you're in a sworn statement, you're saying this happened, then this happened, then this, it's like a directive sort of thing and stuff. So it's sort of the opposite. I, it's kind of, I think it's kind of like why it's, it's one naturally, I sort of naturally speak that way, and two, I think that also helps me in understanding what you're talking about in E Prime and stuff, even though I kind of like, I think when, uh, you first brought up, I kind of fussed it up uh, when I thought of what you were talking about speaking more directly and stuff. But it's a, uh, it makes it easier for me knowing what you're talking about. Like, oh, just just leave some space for ambiguity. You don't know. You know. You don't know what you don't know and stuff like that. Right. And like I said in the chat too, it's not really necessarily about like, you know, trying to like promote the idea that none of us know anything and mm -hmm. we can't say anything assuredly, but just more so to like try to use a language that I think in many ways leaves us feeling more open-minded too as we use it. Because I think as you like use this kind of language more commonly, like it, it leaves room for more possibility i think to show themselves because because part of why i wanted people to talk this way is because especially in things like philosophical discussions once people like commit to an idea i feel like sometimes that kind of becomes like it becomes too absolute and like oh we have to pursue this and that person's just going to defend this statement that they made forever when really like mm -hmm. they didn't even have to do that we should all be like exploring ideas together you know yeah exactly that's my and that's like the whole reason why i think i want to talk like that and stuff personally and stuff just like from the way um like i came up and stuff it's like everyone is so goddamn cocksure and stuff about it like i think i took i talked about it before like the first time i i got on the uh the voice chat and stuff i talked about how i was like raised christian and stuff and i don't think i like got into it but like after i like got like young adult and stuff past that i became more uh more conservative in it and before i wound up uh sort of falling away from all that um mm. but there's a uh, there's definitely like a uh, a crisis of certainty in in that whole thing where once I fell away from it, it's like it was this weight lifted off of my shoulders where I didn't have to be right all the time. Where there right. was like some sort of uh, liberty in knowing that some shit that you that you could say some stuff and it would be wrong and it would have no consequence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So. Totally. I think there's like a freedom in it, you know? It's so oh, amazing. Who was that? Yeah, who was that? Who the fuck was that? Who's oh. saying? Who's talking? That wasn't. Give the... us a thought. <laughs> Give us some thoughts. What do you think? Um, do you Do you feel like any of this could be a good thing? Interesting? Tell us what you're thinking, my New Jersey sister i don't know okay so i'm like caught up in it's just it's just funny timing because i've been wanting to go on a 10-day silent retreat and i just log in Ooh, and what's that it's basically like it's basically like a, um i i don't want to botch how you pronounce it but it's like a this Spinana or something like it's like um it's like a Buddhist thing basically. I suck so hard for not knowing shit about what I'm talking about right now. But uh, <laughs> it's a ten day. What's the idea? And basically, it's meditation. 
and you're meditating. It's basically men and women are separated. You're with a group of men or women, depending on your sex, Thank and you. you're just you're walking like with them. You're you're intermediate fasting for ten days, so you're eating like two meals with like a twenty hour break in between, like um in between like takes and stuff. Um, it's a really cool isn't that thing. Ramadan? No, but fasting is a part that? of a part of Islam and the Islamic faith. It's just a part. It's just but a part fasting, of the uh, the fasting is good for you. Fasting, fa- yeah, fasting isn't necessarily like a, a Muslim or like yeah, it's Christian just, thing. She yeah. said it was a Buddhist. Ritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's a it's an ascetic thing in general to the to deny yourself. Aren't they supposed to like not bust a nut in like two months or something when they're doing Ramadan? <laughs> well, she's not talking about Ramadan. She's talking about a Buddhist thing. She's talking um, about a Buddhist <laughs> retreat. Wait, so are you gonna go on this? Have you been on this um, before? I haven't. It's like a really long process. Typically, okay, they're kind of free, but you have to apply through this like organization that's all connected, like. Everywhere I've looked, it's the same website, so I'm thinking that it's pretty legit. The internet scares me, though. It's so wow. crazy. Uh, but um, it's basically you apply. Everything's taken up now up until, like, <sighs> next March. So I'm kind of, like, waiting. But I'm definitely about to do that. I really want to. Well, what, like, like, draws like, you to this? Like, what do you think will be the benefit? Um, Just being a being in my mind like having a break Mm -hmm. not like not talking not reacting like giving time to reflect way more than you averagely do because you know distractions life you can't just sit there and not talk for 10 days That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I feel like even though we're talking about like a language and you're talking about like a silent retreat, there's still a lot of like parallels here because it's like in this language that we're talking about, you're like taking on purposefully more of a passive mode, you know, which is like similar to doing something like being silent for 10 days, which is crazy. Like you're basically just listening or i guess if no one else is talking (laughs) you're not necessarily listening to others but you're still like creating a silence to like listen and open your mind to other things has nobody else been silent for 10 days like not talk to anybody else no that's so crazy i don't know (laughs) really hey i'm glad you made it (laughs) thanks buddy hello (laughs) I've been listening to you guys. Straight the what do you like, think? Dude, I've been silent for 10 days for sure. Easily. Yeah, Girl, that's please. so cool. Really? Is that like, yeah, is that like the so product hard. of living alone? Like, No, I don't live alone. I live with flatmates. I live with four other people at the moment. I've always been flatting. To talk. I've been flatting since I was like 16. But a, I'm so surrounded bad. by people, but it's not like... I don't find fulfillment necessarily in having dialogues with other people if we're not on the same page. Like if we're not trying to achieve the same thing, if we're not trying to talk about the same kind of ideas, like, dude, I don't want to fucking talk to you. So just like, leave me alone. True. And Damn. Like, Ten days, days is easy. That's easy. So if your roommates like, hey, like, have you seen the bananas? You just are like, you're just like, <laughs> just like yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm busy, yo. Yeah, I'm busy. Like, I. What, you say that with your eyes or what? Like, you're saying you talk for 10 days. Yeah, I mean, like, literally, I can avoid talking to people for like 10 days because we're all like on our own schedules at work, like doing our own thing. Um, the only time where I'll have interactions with like certain flatmates is when like we'll pass each other in the hall and I'll just give them like, you know, the chin up, like sup kind of hmm. thing. But I'll always <laughs> have my headphones in. So it's like, don't fucking, don't fucking talk to me. But what if somebody asks you a question? 
What are they gonna ask? <laughs> what are they gonna ask? Really <laughs> though. my bananas. You be under, no, uh, you, you under, I'm, you underestimate how much like having headphones in and just like at least looking like you're in a zone. But what if well, I don't like keep people, we'll keep people from talking to you? Talk about like, yeah. I, I, I <laughs> all right, all right, right wait, let's. We gotta stay on topic. I wanna ask something. So are you here? Oh shit! She just let. Are you here? Because I want to ask her. Oh shit! My keyboard stopped working as well. If you can hear me, whenever you're able to talk, I really wanted to ask you, as a person who I know is a Spanish speaker, before an English speaker, if you had any insights to give us about a thing like E Prime. But you're probably not even hearing this right now. Let me add you in the chat. Does anyone else speak another language? Either uh, as their I first speak, language um, or... I speak, I speak a language from the, the Zion. From the what? That's kind of an interesting that, point. What is that? That is the language so, of uh, creatures like 30 million light years away. Oh my god. Uh, uh, dude, fuck off with that. With that thought, that. <laughs> All right. Well, that, that's a, that that's a, that's a different conversation. conversation. That's a different exactly. conversation. Exactly. Uh, that was the yeah, that was well, alien comes back. I'm really that was the aliens and ghosts conversation. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're trying to stay on topic. Oh, Kokra, that's right. You're Colombian. Hey. Hey, Hi. love. How you doing? I'm I'm good. I feel good right here. now. Oh, good. Hey, can, can you, you tell us? Oh, there she is. Well, this is a question for both of you. Then, can you hear? Can you hear? Yeah. Oh shit! You're like coming in and out a little bit, but you can hear me. What the fuck? All right. Well, I'm gonna ask Kokora, and maybe, hopefully, you can hear me as well. Kokora, can you hear me? Yeah. So this is a question for both of you as Spanish speakers. Um, speaking, uh, thinking of this language, E prime, which omits all versions of the verb to be or is, would such a thing like even be possible in Spanish? Like how is Spanish structured with its syntax? Like is the word is or being as like some like definitive verb that you use often? Is that like similar? in Spanish or or what Can you give us some insight as English speakers um I'm pretty sure that in Spanish it's not like to to be isn't like necessarily uh completely like it's more so like English where it's not like you can say I am doing something but you could also feel it and say like I feel like doing something or what's more common like what's more what's more like standard um, well, in the case where you're doing something, you just say, I am doing something. But like, okay. um, huh, I don't know. I feel like, well, what that's- about the apple I is red? Pretty... I think it's pretty the same. Yeah, like, what about I think the there present? There you are. Huh? Oh. Talk to us. We need you. We need your input. Can you hear me? Yes. I heard I you. Okay, I think it's kind of like the same. Okay. Uh, the verb. Yeah, um, what is it? Is it S? About... Like the apple is red? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, say, we say like that is. Okay. I love your Spanish, by the way. <laughs> okay, so this is like common. This is similar. Yeah, it's like that is that. Um that <laughs> we just have like feminine and masculine uh, pronouns pronouns like we do that's so sexist. Do you guys that is and that's something i actually talked about in the video i want to ask you guys about that as well like how how is spanish gendered like it's gendered in a way different than english right dude i was just talking about this the other day well, we Wait, let's hear like from Spanish. that are masculine mm -hmm. and feminine. We can okay. see that they, they like finish with this letter like A or O and masculine and feminine, but 
And that you is that for most nouns? That. Like, do most nouns have a gender? Yeah, like all of them. Well, there's a little, um, a few ones that don't really have, but all of them they have. So most of them do. You know. Yeah. I feel like English. Uh, yeah. I don't. Is that true for English? Like, that's not right. We have a lot of masculine and feminine words that I feel we don't even think about. Like, I feel oh, like even a word like buttress might technically be feminine according to some dictionary just because, like, the S suffix is usually feminine, you know, like duchess and whatever mm -hmm. the fuck. But I would say for the most part, do our nouns have a gender? I don't think they do, right? I think so. I feel like they kind of, like, have, like, Perhaps. a ghost of a, of a gender. <laughs> the ghost of a gender. You know? Because, like, yeah. a lot of, like... Because at a, at a time, you know, like, uh, English, like, not English, but, uh, French was the, uh, was the, uh, the language of the day and stuff, and French being, like, a Latin-based language has, like, uh, uh, like, gendered pronouns and whatnot. So, like, I feel some of that might translate over to the, the, the lingua franca to, uh, to be more precise was, uh, French. And I think like some of that might trans translate over to like today's <laughs> English. You know what I mean? Mm. Well, what do you guys so think like, about this? Uh, I would oh, yeah. Uh, it. Uh, oh, sorry. I, yeah, I, you go and then. Oh wait, what? You sound like you got something to say. Say it. Yeah, yeah go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I was just gonna ask you about what you, what you were asking about. Uh, the language? Oh, I was asking about... Well, at first I was asking about whether or not Spanish is structured in a way where it uses, like, a similar verb to is or to be often, which it seems like you guys do, which is s, is, a, 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 Those are more the, the gendered, um, like, the, but gendered. It would be, uh, the, uh, el, ella, La, uh, mm -hmm. but like, yeah. It's yeah. Gendered. Wait, is your is is your is also gendered? Uh, no, no. When uh, or I I guess. Or I, only the nouns. It's mostly nouns because t is is ser and you would say estoy, like okay. I am. Um. Mm -hmm. um and then, but I, I wouldn't say so. I feel like the there's no no. I don't feel like that is gendered. I could be thinking of it incorrectly. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, maybe more to add as well. No. Yeah. Do you have any more to add? Well, about that, no, not really, not much. I was... <laughs> well, I was gonna ask you a question, um, just based on the conversation that I had, um, like, earlier this week, we were talking about, like, Spanish pronouns and how you address males compared to how you address females, because in English, at least, we've, we've created this, um, new kind of you know, we have miss and we have misses, but we also have ms, and that's kind of like the in-between thing. And um, from my understanding in Spanish, you don't have that. So you have, um, you address males in a certain way, but you address females as what, senorita? So it's it's like little girl, and that that's consistent across like, you know, however, however all of the, the female in question you're talking to it. So, is that is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> well, we have like <laughs> you refer as the is, is it a senior? Is it like senorita? Like senorita is like like a young woman, and like senora senora is like a an older woman, like a more seasoned woman, right? Seasoned. Yes. Seasonal. I don't Kaya, know. Do you speak I, I'm hilarious. Trying to be hilarious. 
<laughs> I try to be like politically like correct. Or I thought it was like a class thing, like like Senora was like somebody who was richer or something. Is that? Something yeah, that's that my that? understanding as well. I yeah. thought it was. Yeah, I thought I it was like. Felt that. I thought it was more like a like like how like uh, class in a black like I in a black seniority. Like a, yeah, like a black. <laughs> So, in black culture, you wind up becoming like an auntie after like you know, mid thirties or like early forties and shit. <laughs> and you funny. know what I'm saying? That's how I like, um, it. Kind of like a madam or like a mademoiselle or some shit. Yeah, like like yeah. a Aji, like Aji my career. So, wait. Yeah. I keep seeing you light up green, like you're trying to say something. Were you trying to say something? Do you speak Spanish? Just no. What are you saying? It's okay. <laughs> my thing sucks. Fuck, I need a better <laughs> voice thingy, my bobber. Technology. I hear her. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Ah, oh, nothing. I'm just laughing, honestly. Um, verminizer, you said some funny ass mm -hmm. shit like five seconds ago about auntie and i thought that was so funny <laughs> what i say um about i was just talking truth yeah no nah, it was just funny as hell because you were talking truth like like it's relatable no but i was saying how i viewed uh sin like senior senora senorita as like seniority like i looked at like not a, as a class thing i never saw it as that but that might be because of like where i grew up yeah and, like, uh, do you speak Spanish? No, sadly. <laughs> huh? I, speak, I speak New Jersey. <laughs> Got that's, you. How, that's how I that's how I was taught Spanish and stuff like in middle school and high school and stuff. It's like senorita, senorita, you're younger. Senora, you're older. Like uh, it's the same way I learned sort of. Kind of learn Arabic and stuff. It's a uh, shit. I'm not trying to like remember how I, how I yeah, remember the Arabic. Terry chops in here. All right. Well, let me ask uh, you guys. Let me let me keep this discussion philosophical. So I brought up the gender thing in the video actually because I feel like this is something that used to get talked about more and recently has changed in a really dramatic way now that society has just unanimous, unanimously decided that gender is the best fucking thing ever for some reason. Mm -hmm. But back in like the 60s and 70s when like there was a lot of like feminist theory coming out of nowhere and shit there was a lot of attempts for feminists a lot of feminist writers were writing about language reform in english and how i'm sure we all know like english in many ways is biased to like make the male noun pronoun whatever the more neutral the more neutral thing you know like Dude, Basically, do you really want to say that that reform came out of nowhere? Yeah. What do you mean came out I, of nowhere? That's what you said. But what, I don't mean it came out of literally nowhere. I'm saying, though, you know, um, I'm not out but of that's nowhere. What but you I mean, said. feminism, what I meant by that, sorry, let me clarify with my language. Did you kill your what throat? I meant by that, <laughs> what I meant by that was that, you know, feminism is like a pretty new movement in the history of the world. So like when feminist theory really started getting heavy in like the 60s and 70s, there were kind of a lot of novel ideas that didn't come from nowhere, you're right. And I shouldn't have said it that way with my speech because these are definitely everything. ideas that women have Apology been brewing accepted. on for a long time, but didn't necessarily have like a platform to share them. So then How all of a sudden you have this boom of like, I'm How fucking sorry. You. How dare you? How sorry. dare you? Anyway, Yo, let me continue. Let me continue. She so broke an like, e-crime rule. <laughs> we're not speaking of <laughs> crime, thank you. So basically, aside from like the male nouns, pronouns, whatever, being like the the more like neutral default in English for like whenever you have to default to a more neutral thing, you know, i.e. like mankind or we just see the word yeah. man often used as like a placeholder when people mean like humanity or all peoples, you know. 
on top of that, like, I feel like, um, something I said in the video is true that, like, the way that we use pronouns so often, even when it's the information contained within is like really superfluous. I want to know what you guys think about this idea. I feel like, I feel like when we're constantly calling out the sex of like people doing this or that, even when it's so unnecessary, you know, just to say like, oh look, she's walking down the street and he's crossing the street, you know? Like we're always like calling into attention and the spotlight like what sex someone is so arbitrarily i feel like we come to internalize this as more meaningful than we should you know and i think a lot of feminists feel this way and why in the 70s especially there's a lot of feminists trying to have more gender neutral language you know which is a f attitude i feel like i mean we can go here after. I want to ask what you guys think about this, if it's true, but I feel like it's an attitude that's completely changed, not changed, but just kind of been skipped over, which I feel kind of sucks, you know? Like now it's, there is a lot of people talking about things like gender neutral language, but there's also like this incredible enforcement of gendered pronouns and people will say like, don't use gender neutral language for me because this is my pronoun and I told you it's my fucking pronouns, so you better fucking use it. And if you don't, you're a bigot. You know what I'm saying? God damn it. So like, uh, what do you feel about this? Like, Share your thoughts. I personally, like I understand both of what you're, where you're coming from and also where like, uh, the, like the, the people on the other end of the conversation would be coming from as far as like them being offended by it. It's, uh, um, it's, uh, like, like I personally, I am very partial to like gender abolitionism, and so abolitionism in general. Um, Me as well. It's, it's like, like I understand where mm. you're, like when, when Betty brought the uh, Bethany brought the, uh, the, the whole conversation, the whole conversation about uh, the gender and stuff like that. It's like, hey, you know, it's sort of like. It like as far as like Western culture especially goes back to like the Bible and stuff like that as far as uh like man and woman like in, like woman being like the companion of man and stuff like that and like even when you like think of it in a scientific term and stuff it, it goes back like people don't under understand how much science has dependent is dependent on like 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 Aquinas and stuff like that, you know what I mean? You know, understand mm -hmm. how much like science is like dependent like on church tradition and like church Absolutely. understanding yeah, of yeah. like things like gender and stuff like that. The whole idea well, that you would have like male and female gender and stuff is like is science is is church based. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know. I'd go deeper than Aquinas, though. I'd go further back than Aquinas. I, sure, yeah, I don't, I don't personally believe that gender like only goes back to like Christianity or anything. It I mean, does. I I'm not saying that it does. I'm talking as far as like, uh -huh. as far as like how we, as far as like yeah. our society now, as far as we interpret it goes. Like it was like rebooted, it was like rebootstrapped by like Aquinas and stuff. And as far as like Aristotelian metaphysics goes, yeah, absolutely. You can't say that non secular society was based on a certain type of morality that was not influenced at all by, you know, Christian underpinnings. Like, you just you can't say that. It's just yeah. not, it's not true. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like it was like I was saying like the last time I was on the chat and stuff is like when I was talking about like how people don't actually change, they just they're like you're like a tree branch. You wind up growing out of the trunk of something and sure you have like a branch, like like branches off on like a right angle or something like that, but like the branch itself winds up growing wind up growing outward from like the branch in the same direction you don't wind up changing the direction that the branch grows in and stuff and that's sort of like how i see uh like gender 
as far as like the Western, as far as Western society goes, if like you have like different sort of societies and stuff you go to, I think like Kathmandu and stuff like that, where you wind up having like up to like five different kind of genders and stuff like that. Is like different gender types and stuff like that, and like even like the Native Americans have like uh, I forget what they call it, like some sort of like twin gender or whatever like this. But uh, it's definitely yeah, but like the bi gender also... thing is like not necessarily the uh, the default. Mm, I think that that's also like a popular narrative in like Western liberal discourse that's kind of disingenuous because like I've seen a lot of people basically try to put forward the idea that like the binary both in the sense of like gender and sex is like some Western construct which is just such a lie and like I feel like it kind of does a disservice too to like all the women of all different cultures who are dealing with the same shit meanwhile like white people in America are like look at what we created as if other cultures didn't also like have really binary categories for sex like ever since ancient times and impose them on their women population especially in like really oppressive ways so like i definitely am skeptical of most narratives that say like oh this culture like didn't have genders or whatever because usually whenever i've looked into any of this shit it's like totally wrong and it's, but it's just not like a narrative yet. asshole on twitter like lying basically oh yeah like, yeah it's like it... i'm not saying like yeah, definitely. Yeah, you gotta like, you also gotta like you get you also gotta like consider like how how uh different like how uh, different but like how much like uh western culture and so also it's like spread its tentacles and stuff across like the globe like the between like the 17th to like 19th century and stuff as well and so for sure um, but i'm saying if you look earlier than and, than before colonialism and shit like a lot of these cultures did have very rigid binaries too like it's not like this is just something that comes out of western culture like uh, I, 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 see, I, see what you, I see what you're culture. saying yeah i see what you're saying yeah and especially yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's like some I'm not saying like like male patriarchy what we would I'm not saying that what we would in the West would call male patriarchy what we understand is male patriarchy to you know keep with our phenomenological right. we have a specific sort of understanding but so does pretty much not saying <laughs> not saying that that is not doesn't have like his cousin in every other sort of it definitely does it but definitely doesn't that does. go against the prime yeah what do you mean what do you mean like assuming pronouns or even using them well i'm not talking about pronouns necessarily but i'm talking so about a specific Phenomenal, I don't know if I'm using the word even correctly. Phenomenological uh, characteristics, physical care, a physical characteristic um, of uh, a particular human trait uh, having a, a decided advantage in human culture and stuff is what I'm talking about. Um, doing my best as a cis straight male uh, to make a, a, a feminist uh, sort of materialist uh, what do you call it? like history summary of history of human of human interaction and stuff dude what uh, the yeah. hell are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> Got no idea what the fuck I you're sort of, about. I sort of understand <laughs> what he's saying. I Can somebody of, please understand. explain it? I think he's just saying that, you know, we've come to understand like gender in a very through a very western lens and mm -hmm. the ways that we've done that, like while they don't necessarily mirror the same patriarchal structures of other societies, in some ways we've all like influenced each other's, especially Western 
Western culture has had such a pronounced influence on the world, but even before yeah. that, even in ways that might be less specific, which is why I think you tried to use the word phenomenological there, you're, you're sort of saying that there mm -hmm. is like, even in languages that are less specifically rigid or binary, there is still an oral innocence of yeah. this, this structure. But I yeah, think, def, yeah, I think yeah. that's true. And I think it's also true that there's plenty of more explicit context of this being enforced as well throughout history too. I mean, I'm someone who believes that patriarchy predates civilization. Like I feel like it started around the advent of agriculture, which is where a lot of anthropologists and I, historians. Wait, 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 well. does that mean that you're saying that patriarchy is rooted in biology? Not necessarily. Um, I believe that it is. I, I think that it, I think that it, I think that it, I personally think that it, I personally think that it sort of like uh, branches off from uh, our evolution and from bonobos, chimpanzees, and uh, I agree with you on this one. I, I no, think their societal human. influence comes in later and it reinforces um, these kinds of societal roles that we've, um, kind of uh, be naturally drawn towards uh, from from our bi biology. Um, yeah, at absolutely. the moment, you know, we we're moving towards more egalitarian societies where we don't have to let uh, those kind of implicit biases inform or rule our, our daily actions. We have that choice, um, most of us in, in Western society. Um, we, mm -hmm. we have that choice where we can we can make the choices that we want regardless of our gender, but I think that it started off as something with a biological foundation. And I think when we're talking about feminism and how we can kind of improve equality within societies, I think it's, it's doing a disservice to us as women to ignore um, empirical evidence of, of biological traits that that are dissimilar. I agree with you. Wait, Grace was trying to say something. Grace, your volume's a little low. I want to make sure you get to speak. What were you trying to say? Oh, you can't hear me. I can hear you. <laughs> we can hear you now. What were you trying to say? I saw you light up green a few times. Yes, I was that. Like, this whole thing of... It's about like being objective in conversations and the importance of being objective. That, that like that's why we don't kind of go through all this uh, binary conversation. It's like we are more open. We have to keep it objective, and you know, I think that's why we don't we don't use like feminine, masculine. We are like more open to all of this spectrum of, you know, gender, to yeah. keep the conversation, like, objective, to not be, you know. Yeah, well, I think that's a good point and like that this is why like I definitely align with the goal of like these feminists that I was describing in the 70s who wanted to create more gender neutral language because similar to the purpose of e-prime and like what you're saying I think that it's true that when you use language that's gendered where it doesn't need to be people who use it internalize the difference as meaningful you know but if you refuse to use it where it's superfluous, I think that you do gain a more neutral perspective on the world in general, you know? Like, I think when you're constantly forced to call out the sex of whoever, every time they fucking say something or do something, then like, it does, it does create almost like a structure for yourself to create your whole worldview in like a way that reinforces it negatively. And I think that has to go with what everyone else is saying here too. When we started to talk about the history of these things, like just like history, I think the longer it goes on and the longer we adhere to certain standards, like uh, yeah. we begin to integrate a framework. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm like being by being objective, we create these trust like we have more um uh 
I'm sorry, I, I forgot the word. I'm <laughs> gonna use <laughs> credibility. We have more credibility you now in this society and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Well, I feel like we're actually, this is why I maybe sounded a little frustrated earlier, but I feel like we're moving away from this attitude that I think would be a good thing. This attitude where like gender neutrality is a thing that should be a goal, you know? A lot of people say that they share in this goal, and I don't want to get deep into this. We don't have to get too political or personal or anything here. But I feel like moving more towards like a gender neutral language and a gender neutral society in many ways like would be a good thing. And I feel like a lot of people signal outwardly that they want this, but at the same time it's hard to reconcile that idea with what I feel I'm observing where really like it seems like people almost like gender now. Like it's kind of weird. It's like gender fucking sucks like why are we celebrating this thing you know and it seems like we're yeah. almost like in integrating it more hardcore than ever it's like as soon as we became critical of it we also decided like let's fucking marry it like what so that's kind of frustrating but i mean i think maybe as long as the motive is there and hopefully remains intact like this could be a thing that I mean, maybe we're on the right track. I have no fucking idea. But uh, I mean, what do, what do you guys think about like, like I said, we shouldn't get like overly political. Um, what do you mean? What do you guys get, think? Hmm. What do you mean with getting political? I mean, like, we don't have to like make this necessarily a political discussion about gender and all this shit. Like, it's really supposed gender to be gender is language, political. You know? Well, yeah. yeah. Well, it's supposed to be about language, which is why we brought it up, you know? And I think that the historical discussion is also, like, relevant and everything we're talking about because I think language works very much like our You're social and political wrong. structures. Why? <laughs> Let's hear some thoughts. Um, I was going to say, like, when you're talking about a me metaphysical idea, it's really hard to be objective because you don't really know about it because you don't really see it. So you can be objective, really. About in a what don't you see? That we can be like objective. Evangelical. What's a metaphysical idea though? What, what are you talking about that's metaphysical? Like. I don't know, something you don't see, you know, like ghost or God or religion, for example. It started like, well, they tell you basically this is this and this is this. Like it is mm. an, an idea that it, it really tells you what it is. It, it doesn't give you any like opportunity to think like, okay, maybe that's not like that. It's like this is God and you have to do this and it's not really it's not really objective you know that's a great idea actually and something we should talk about like I feel like that's so don't you guys feel like this is ultimately the difficulty in like a lot of language like a lot of the terms that we use are so ill-defined like even a word like good which presents as being like a pretty like elementary level word like everyone knows what good means but if you sit down and ask different people what is good you know people really like m will have wildly different answers to that question and a lot of them i think if we actually sat and articulated our literal answers a lot of us would probably like disagree on them you know like i think that's true especially for like all philosophical discussions like we we're trying to talk about like consciousness in the chat the other night like what the hell is consciousness, Ain't no consciousness. like it's Im <laughs> it's impossible I like your, really i like your definition of it um i'm about to unplug from my phone and put it into the uh put it in my theater real quick you're gonna plug what in What just happened? Well, he says he likes my definition of consciousness, and the only way I define consciousness is 
the feeling of being conscious because I feel like that's the most neutral definition of the word like that's the thing everyone can agree on other people will tell you like it's also like a soul it's also like some like movable energy and maybe it can like leave outside your body and go places but I feel like what's really important and part of why I value phenomenology because it takes this sort of like subtractive approach to finding common agreement especially in language and about objects it takes this approach to trying to find what is most commonly understood about a thing you know like how else can we find any agreement unless we start from the most basic premise and it like all seems so self-explanatory but it's like isn't it crazy yeah. how much of our disagreements are like rooted in this structure of language? Like look at like Republicans and fucking liberals like fighting on the internet. If you look mm -hmm. at any of these arguments, a lot of them are just like arguing endlessly because you can see if you actually sat down and wanted to make a chart for yourself, they are deviating from some premise and they're not even going to like go through the trajectory of their arguments together you know mm -hmm. you can never find agreement here like you're yeah, just committed to polar opposite viewpoints and you're just gonna keep going on in your little fucking sphere forever yeah you just you're you're they're yelling each other's talking points at each other and it, like no one really cares what no one really cares what the other person's talking point is because it, it, each of each other's off, everybody's talking point like like means something to them, but it doesn't mean anything to the person that they're yelling at. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's sort of like it's, I kind of see it as a sort of a cowardice on both parts that no one is willing to be vulnerable enough to say, all right. This is the way I understand things to be. How do you understand things to be? And then, you know, they the other side says, this is how I understand things to be. And, it, you know, and then you work it out that way. You know, it, it's, right. sort of, it's sort of like a cowardice that way on both people's parts, in my well, it's opinion. It's kind of masturbatory, right? It's yeah, like, I it, feel it like you're not is. even... Yeah, it's like you're both just talking to hear yourselves fucking talk, you know? Uh, and I feel like where? both... Oh, so well, we're, I, I like definitely have. Oh, sorry. I read. No, so like I, I read like a what you call like a uh, a, a, a research paper on online content, like what makes online content go on by like go on like viral online. That I, after I I watched like a CPG Gray video, like I mm -hmm. read like a like a paper that he linked into it, and it really. With the video, the video definitely like cuts to the core of it. Is like people wind up online talking, getting clicking up in like online groups and talking shit about like the like the people, like the people that they're they hate or the people that they're against. With you know their click that they form, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You form this click based on the people that you don't like. And you want to talk shit about the people you don't like with the people that you that you agree with, and then you wind up creating like this sort of like caricature of uh, of the people that you don't like. You know what I mean? And you wind up yeah. talking about that. Totally. It's and like you wind up just... arguing against a straw man, a Absolutely. straw person. And yeah. it becomes like repulsive. And this is something I feel like, I don't know about you guys, but this is something I felt like a moment of like self awareness and self repulsion within like the past year. Like I definitely got sucked into like these. I'm uploaded. I'm uploaded into the, uh, into the, uh, phenomenology chat. Oh yes, please. Thank you. Hey. Yeah. Like I feel like, you know, I definitely, I felt like for a while, like for example, <laughs> When Jordan Peterson came out, I mentioned this all the time still. But when he came out, I was like, I was like invested in the discourse around him like it was a football game, you know? Like I didn't actively feel like necessarily viscerally angry, but angry enough to like participate. Like it literally was like a sporting event for me, you know? Okay, like, dude, I wanted dude. to watch his videos and get mad and talk to other people. And then like all of a sudden, 
I feel like I noticed other people. I feel like I noticed other people engage in the discourse around him. Just like it started to feel like exactly what you were saying. I'm like, oh, they just won't shut up about the fucking guy. Like you're making him famous. And then I was like, ew, that's me. Like, why am I watching this? And why am I talking about him? Like, ew, I am participating in his celebrity. I'm like a fucking pawn, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just like stop doing it. And this is why I don't mention these fucking assholes and why I've come to feel very strongly that a lot of these progressive pundits or whatever that say they're doing things like responsible platforming like you're not doing fucking no goddamn responsible platforming you're doing literally no good all you're doing is like contributing to the celebrity of these fucking assholes mm -hmm. and the worst part is you're making money off of it like at least as some like random twitter user or youtube user that uses ad blocker by the way mm -hmm. like <laughs> i didn't feel like i was contributing too heavily to their careers but like these fucking like progressive pundits like they're all a bunch of fucking hacks i feel like they should be ashamed of themselves like you're literally making ben shapiro famous like every really? fucking day like really? oh, look at this video clip of ben shapiro saying that women are bad at math let's talk about it for two hours look at my youtube with 500 000 views on this yeah. fucking clip of me talking about ben shapiro saying women are bad at math like what the fuck are you doing dude you're smart enough to the be beyond that you're smart enough to see way beyond that. You're smart enough to see the game that they're playing. And first of all, with the Jordan Peterson thing, like, I'm not saying that I'm a fan of him, I'm not saying that I agree with everything that he says, but have you He's read his dick. book, Maps of Meaning? Have well, you read when the correlations between him hilarious. and three pages? Honestly, it was bad. I'm... Come on. No, I recommend going further with that. If you are interested in the psychology of Carl Jung, if you're interested in Nietzsche... I'm not. I, I don't like Carl Jung at all. I do like Nietzsche. But I've also like Nietzsche. watched interviews of Peterson talking about Nietzsche, and I felt like he was a fucking idiot. Like, I don't feel like he understands he, Yeah, Nietzsche. like, that's my Dude. thing. It's like, I, I watched him talk about those... Talk about Jung. I watched him talk about... Yeah. I watched him talk about... Uh, what should I call about... Uh, he has a lot like, about him. Heidegger too, and it's like laughably bad. Like it's really like he doesn't understand the stuff that he's talking about. Really, not. It's not that, know, what's that? What's that one guy's name? Milo something. Yeah, Napolis. <laughs> yeah, it's like he, dude. That guy's a hack. Okay, that guy's a hack. He's, I, yeah, I, he's I definitely. That. But like, he's, listen, if if you you're trying to attack somebody who has been. Did I not just life. tell you I've spent a lot of time like invested in this man to the point that I felt self disgust for like being Wrong. such an active participant? Yeah, I'm I like about, was I'm up talking in this about guy's like 35 butt. plus years. I'm talking about dedicating. Look, I'm sure he's uh, he's psychology like, and philosophy. I, well, I'm like, not really a fan of psychology. I understand. Like period. I'm sure he said like but fine things, but that's you kind of his thing. Any arguments like in response to this, like I can never, um, I can never find people who are willing to put up arguments against specific points that my, he's made. My argue, well, I mean, give us a specific point. Like my yeah, argument really. about the guy, my argument about the guy is that he presents this like facade of academia and pretending to like understand and go deep with thinkers like Heidegger and Nietzsche and Dude, what and do stuff. you mean if you watch of this academia guy, because he's because extremely if you critical watch of academia <laughs> it's not bringing it to a wider audience he's just hey i'm making the law and order sound bring me Right. Law and order. Law and order. Get Everyone, I'm just saying, if Dave's not original, he's not original, he's not smart. You have to deal with that I, shit. I agree with me. you. Listen, let's I disagree. disagree. I disagree. Everybody. He can disagree and be wrong. Listen, we're taking it down <laughs> okay, a few true. notches. <laughs> We're talking yeah. I can disagree and be wrong, but I disagree. I disagree with Look, you. You disagree okay. and be wrong, though. All okay. right. My brothers, my sisters. <laughs> The dude's an idiot. The dude's an idiot, and he. Wait, where did this discussion begin? We're talking about language <sighs> and tribalism and finding mutual agreement where there is and he none. He got a doctor degree. My brother. My brother. Right? <laughs> I'm going to call. Okay.
Dude, fuck you. Like, Jesus. fuck you. Fuck you, too. I love you, but fuck you. Fuck. Oh. I love you, too, but I hope you... Come on. Be... No. No. I love you, too, babe. No, we, we I love you, too, babe. Guys. Oh, okay. It's guys. dangerous, by the way. Read Plato. Read Plato. Guys. Fuck Plato. No. He fucking thought no. that people should fucking be oh. slaves. No, hey, sorry. That was hey. Eric Trotto. Hey. <laughs> don't be talking shit about, about Plato, okay? Don't talk. Yeah. Don't, don't be talking talk shit about Plato, okay? Just That's my boy. Look, I love all of you guys, okay? We're just having century. healthy disagreements here. No, this is not healthy. Girl. I'm trying to mediate. You should all respect Sad, my authority. I'm all right, all right. Guys, guys, I'm we'll, bang we'll, bang we'll one. I'm we'll bang bang. Subway. Everyone come so, down. Bang we'll, bang. Agree. we'll agree to bang disagree bang. about. I've been sipping on mimosas over there, too, okay? I'm still sipping on mimosas I will call out your conversational etiquette right now. Even though I am on your team ideologically right now, calm shit. I'm, ca I'm calling, calling out, right out your mimosa, mimosas, <laughs> mimosa foul. My mimosa, okay? my mimosa laden, my mimosa laden fucking tirade. Mimosa laden anger. Okay, I mean, let's but, try but to let's try, try to neutralize. Let's try to neutralize this a little because I think. <laughs> We can have some sort of interesting discussion around this idea because anybody who might be listening to this will have just observed that we just had a major disagreement that ultimately ended with this idea that we put forward that a person who myself and find to be intellectually and morally repugnant could hypothetically be helping hordes of people most notably of a certain demographic and i think I that this is actually an, this. <laughs> right okay. and i think that this is actually an interesting idea from a philosophical perspective because this is the same idea that we run into when we talk about things like religion you know like a thing like christianity or like islam which many many people from both religions both like ex-practitioners and even people who still practice will tell you that like these things can be incredibly toxic for many people you know but a lot of people say like oh um you know certain people need religion like even though i don't you know like i'm enlightened but like certain people need religion and it's not up to us to judge them it's a good thing for them like especially people who like have it's struggled with addiction or whatever fucking thing. Bro. But like, do you think that a thing, okay, and no yelling, let me mediate, please. I wanna ask you both. <laughs> I wanna ask you first. <laughs> I wanna ask you first. Because yeah. like the idea that like Jordan Peterson, right, has helped the lives of all these young men, okay, in ways that I think me and have agreed with you are not necessarily like intrinsically harmful ideas like you should be able to fucking clean your room and take personal responsibility have more accountability be strong be whatever you know like these are all great ideas but within like a constellation and this i think is relevant to all the conversations that we were having earlier things like language and history and how your any part of a structure is ultimately an integrated part of a whole if someone like jordan peterson is giving like good psychological advice to like hordes of young men for whatever do you think and do you understand at least or maybe both can you answer both like why people might think that it's not really probably a good thing to recommend this man to others or to see him as doing a good since even if he's like helping these Here. men he doesn't exist in a vacuum and at this point it's yeah. pretty well known his ideas on things like race realism you know which are incredibly yeah. harmful ideas and he doesn't like have what... a solid viewpoint on race realism i will answer your questions with more questions which is okay like mm -hmm when you say like would you recommend jordan peterson to certain people okay what are we recommending him for are we recommending well, even him for just to, even just to conclude like you just did that he has helped hundreds of people i feel like maybe you haven't been exposed as like a self-help his... guru and in, in yeah, the but... same vein as like tony robbins well 
I mean, I guess, but whether or not his like celebrity is the impetus for how big he's become, which, you know, I believe that he definitely is motivated by money. You seem to feel otherwise. I think it's undeniable that his celebrity is so big that these young men who you say are being genuinely helped by him also are most likely exposed to these kinds of ideas he is putting forth in many interviews and they're not taken out of context. I mean, I've watched them and I'm sure yeah. as well, where he yeah. is really like reviving these racist like 18th 19th century ideas uh, about a like people. example like give me a specific example of that and then i can respond okay. to it sure like when he was talking with stefan molyneux who by now he's come out as a white supremacist stefan molyneux this isn't like a like, debatable he, no 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 like, not white has... supremacist white nationalist stefan molyneux has white nationalist no... all right yeah. like I'm, this is where I'm going to catch you up. There's no difference. Um, yeah, there really is. There is no difference. Well, I think there is no difference. Don't talk over <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this conversation started with me like speaking about how much I fucking hate progressive culture right now. You know, it's like I'm not just arbitrarily deciding to align with these assholes. Like I'm I totally aligned agree. against and that's why these I assholes. Like these kinds of conversations because you guys aren't black and white with it, and you're not saying like, okay, this is the way to go, and like these people are bad and these people are good. Like you are willing to delve into the more nuanced perspective of of everything, which is why I find these conversations interesting. But mm -hmm. I, I just want to go to Subway, so I'll be right back. <laughs> go, right, to Subway. go to Subway, yeah. <laughs> Can I give my 20 cents right quick? Yeah, I'll give that. Come on. Okay, so what does it matter if somebody um, is saying something to a certain demographic? Like, what is it? Like, I'm just, I'm not trying to shade the other caller who was, I don't, you know, but it's just like, I didn't understand the logic. Well, what's the problem uh -huh. if your, if your, if your message only benefits a certain group of people? Yeah, like, I just don't understand, like, because like Nazis, they were all, you know, it's the same thing, except it's, it's different levels. You get what I'm saying? Like, well, levels I think that's today. like. <laughs> right. I love the accent. <laughs> I think that I think that it's kind of like what we were saying, like there's nothing implicitly wrong with like, you know, your message resonating with a certain group of people. But as it's what the message you... is. Well, it's not only that, mm -hmm. but I think it, to tie it back into everything else, to to tie it into the structure of our overarching discussion, it's relevant to think about how you ultimately are part of a constellation of whatever context you exist in. So personally, mm -hmm. Jordan Peterson, who we've been talking about, and I really don't want to get back into, so let's not, if any. Because he ain't Jordan shit, Peterson. period. <laughs> Merely, yeah. <laughs> right. But, you know, let, let's and use it, the it shouldn't even be a debate, though. Right. Well, let's well, use the Nazi mm -hmm. example then, which is like the most. Yeah, we're going back to because that's what he's. I think is also true for Jordan Peterson, uh -huh. to be honest. Mm -hmm. But to use the Nazi example, like let's say that you know a message greatly benefited like all the Aryan youth or something in ways that aren't even like implicitly harmful. Like you know Hitler told all the Aryan youth like take responsibility, get into photorealistic painting, like be nice to your wife. Don't beat your wife, like, get into Jesus. I don't know what the fuck Hitler was on about, but like, let's just say like he had some like nice things to say that actually like instilled a bunch of the Aryan youth with like very good, unquestionable characters. Didn't they say that, that Hitler was for um, women's uh, reproductive rights? Sort of, I mean, it's kind, it's kind of sort of, it depends. He believed it depends. was like, you know, entirely like at face value, a terrible thing, you know? Even some of the stuff he, you know, probably some of his criticisms of media and how media work, that was a thing mm -hmm. that really swayed the hearts of the people that I'm sure we could all find some sort of, like, that's, truth in, you know? So that's really a good a thing, too. It's what like... trying to, like, inquire into. Like, if you have a message that works for a group of people, but because you're Hitler and because of the context of your reality, when you're speaking to this group of people, even if what you're talking about has nothing to do with Jews or, you know, homosexuals, or whatever the fuck he was or these groups he's trying to target don't i think that because 
he's so integrated into a structure, like these things can't be ignored, you know? Contrary to someone like Nietzsche, who we were discussing earlier, and who's who was a huge misogynist, but who I said doesn't bother me at all because his misogyny like never really intersected with his philosophy, you know? It was just kind of these like stupid little asides he would go on about women. Separating never... the art from the artist. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, these things ultimately are linked no matter how you spin it. Because, like, even even with Nietzsche, even though I don't, I think his philosophy can still be internalized as meaningful, still when I, like, read the shit he said about women, again, I'm like, oh man. Like, it does make me feel a little less in awe of him. And it does impact my feelings on his work, you know? Not in a way that makes me totally feel like I can't admire it anymore, but... It definitely, I can't divorce my knowledge of what he said about women from everything else, even though I don't think it's like a huge deal, since his philosophy I find to be like very good and useful. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it depends on how, how important these more harmful ideas are integrated into the bigger structure of your philosophy and who you are and the context of everything surrounding you, you know? So it affected your credibility of him? Not my credibility. Well, a little bit, yeah, because it's like, it's just like a disappointment, you know? It's like, I think, I think you can, you can see it just as, yeah, it's like a disappointment. Like you, you find out someone you really admire held an opinion that you're like, aw, you know, like, damn, that sucks. Like, I thought you were better than that. Not to the point that I'm like, oh, I'm going to throw your whole philosophy in the garbage because I felt like none of his but philosophy. But why should you should, though? I should? I mean, not throw it away, but you should question it. If he's got bad judgment on this one certain issue, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, you got a question, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just... You can't just no, but be like, oh, well, toss it to the side and be like, you know, he's right about this, but what he said this and it was some bullshit, but you know what I'm saying? No, like, I, you can't yeah, I totally agree with you, and, I, and that's why I'm saying, like, it does negatively impact my opinion on his overall philosophy to a degree, just not mm -hmm. one that, like, is extreme, you know? If he wrote yeah. a whole book about how women are fucking idiots and, like, just kept going on about this thing, I think it would we would come to a threshold where I'm like, dude, sorry, I can't anymore with you, you know? Yeah, sort of like... But because like, it was just kind of, like, annoying little, like, sexist shits that would come somebody up... Somebody like, call mm. for help. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that, sorry, it does that. impact my opinion on him, absolutely. That's why I'm saying I don't think you can ever make any of this shit exist in a vacuum, but I think the extent to which you internalize it as like meaningful and like allows, not allow, because I don't think this is a conscious decision, but the extent to which like you internalize it as like meaning okay this guy's a fucking idiot especially when it comes to like philosophers and artists and all this like when they have really questionable morals i think it affects our opinions of their work because too like i think that morality ultimately is like it shows your intelligence you know like well, i don't think that Anybody should not be racist, should not be sexist or whatever, just because people say this is a bad thing that you should unquestionably accept. I think that it's a logical conclusion that intelligent people come to because none of these things are founded on any sort of rational premise, you know? It's not rational to be racist, it's not rational to be sexist, you know? So it's not like it's not like I'm just like arbitrarily picking what I think to be morally righteous and morally deplorable. It's that these are all like ultimately logical conclusions. So if you're a philosopher and you're out here like advocating for pedophilia or something, even if it doesn't really have much to do with your philosophy, a thing like that I think would be so like morally egregious. I would have to internalize it like this person's fucked up. I don't really trust anything about what I thought I read from them 
before, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you have to question their judgment because you have to question their sanity at that point. Yeah, and yeah. like their whole world view because it's like, like you can't hold a belief like that. Like pedophilia is okay, I think, and have and have like a rational view of the world, you know? Okay? Can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? I can hear you. Uh, uh, I'm going can, to the. Can you go- hear? No. Really? That's what I thought. What the fuck? Oh, I guess. I've been <laughs> talking. Oh my god! I, I pressed the button on you. <laughs> I'm so motherfucker. Hey. No, it really I'm like, where the hell now. did he go? That is unacceptable. That is I'm unacceptable. Sorry. Okay. I'm offended. Um, I'm sorry. Um. Yeah, I was about to say like, <laughs> go into the what's here, go into the uh, go back. To I agree with that. It's like I've read uh, Carl Schmidt's uh, what do you call it? Po- what political theology? I think what it's called. I can't see it from my bookshelf. But like, I understand reading people you don't disagree with, including very odious people. Because if you don't know, Carl Schmidt was a fucking Nazi, um, like capital N Nazi. Like reading <laughs> stuff like reading shit and getting stuff out of it but not necessarily agreeing with the overall thesis of what they're saying Mm -hmm. so it's not like i'm calling when i'm disagreeing with uh phaedrus over here and i'm saying like she's a fucking idiot that she's fucking racist or anything like that it's or even with jordan peterson or anything like that it's just Even with Jordan Peterson, we were just been talking about like you know <laughs> all the yelling and stuff was about. I think it is being funny. <laughs> yeah, it's just is is that um, there are certain there are certain flaws and stuff where they're thought that you can't really like where you're like wait oh hold up hold up just a minute hold up just a minute what do you mean by this especially when you like. Understand, we can understand the context and stuff of what you're talking about. So, Jordan Peterson, as far as like him talking about uh, his, his, his issues with like race and like sex and gender and stuff like that, is definitely a context in which anyone should read anything that Jordan Peterson has written, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's and not that has- it's not it's not that he doesn't have anything to say. Obviously, clean your room when I was saying bring it up like Admiral Mullen and Adam Carolla talked about like cleaning your room or I think actually Adam Carolla was talking about like cleaning your truck or your car or something like that. <laughs> it's like it's not that that's a here. bad idea per se. It's just that if you're trying to string people up by like that sort of that sort of thing, which I felt like Pedro was saying and stuff, it's like that's not that's not really good enough. That's not original. Well, do you think also the problem <laughs> is because like for me personally, like his ideas on like race and sex or whatever, if this was just some thing that got like I don't know uncovered tomorrow in some article from 1995, look at what Jordan Peterson said 25 years ago. Here's I the thing about would... Jordan Peterson. Here's the thing about Jordan Peterson from a black perspective, as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. If he was correct about anything he said about race, it wouldn't matter to me. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It would affect me negatively no matter what you know what i'm saying yeah, and that's how but I, I think it would affect you I, negatively because he's wrong like if he said anything correct it well, wouldn't affect even if, you negatively well even if well you're talking about like correct like even if he was saying like anything no, that well, he I, said what i was so trying like, to say is what if this stuff came out because like we're so familiar with like these huge interviews he's done where he's he's made a point to go out of his way to talk about these topics a lot and part of what has gained him so much celebrity i'm saying mm-hmm. what if it came out tomorrow like 
we just happened to find out that he said all this fucked up stuff like 25 years ago in some interview no one's ever heard of i think that we would internalize that it would still be a disappointment like we're saying with all these other things but yeah, it wouldn't it was... seem like such a big deal it'd be like all right whatever well he's helped all these other depressed guys and taught them how to clean their room you know what i'm saying I'm, like i think I, part of why it's such a no, problem is because he's made a platform me. out of it I, I it get what would you're still saying. be incredibly bothersome, you know. But like, I, I get I'm, what you're I'm, saying. I yeah, get what you're saying. I, mean, I, I yeah, I get what he you're makes saying the about same it. Same arguments of about race as he does about like sex too. Like, I guess it's hard for me women to. Women are like. I guess it's hard for me to inferior. see past it because both of the. It seems like every argument he makes again for everything that he stands on is fallacious somewhat. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like whether yeah. it's race realism or gender essentialism or him talking about classes like Marxism and stuff like that, it is right. flawed. So like it has some truism to it, definitely. I guess if he was just like a especially people especially people to clean their rooms. Especially with Marx and stuff like I, <laughs> yeah. I don't like i'm not a i consider myself a leftist but i'm not like a marxist because i consider marx to be wrong on more stuff than i'm willing to you know be like a marxist you know considering mm-hmm. so it's like like i can i can sort of feel him but like the stuff that he talks about as far as like postmodern neo marxism is like it doesn't make sense because they it it doesn't it doesn't make sense because they're they're, they're contradictory. You know it's what I'm just saying? so funny that <laughs> someone someone who's so critical of postmodernism on the premise that it like is too deconstructualist and like yes. basically removes truth from everything. Yet this person in an interview it's, I saw somebody asked him if he believed in Jesus or something and he goes well no they asked him if you believe that like jesus was the divine son of god and he's like well what do you mean by jesus i know right <laughs> like, like... Said this, like you're calling <laughs> other people you're calling other what do you people, mean by like... jesus of Jesus Christ? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> all, all truth is crumbling around wah, him everywhere wah, because wah. people refuse to like adhere to historical definitions. <laughs> you have to I have mean, somebody define Jesus in the context of a sentence for you. Like, I mean just so I mean just so watch out, just the the just like him his admiration his admiration of uh of Jung of you who is like Jung is a bring that idiot. into it. yeah it's like a bring that sort of into question and stuff like obviously like you would like just view Jesus as like a huge like archetype for Western society and stuff but is like I yeah, think like, he was exactly. non-binary too who are you <laughs> like I don't no, know about he his had gender. a lot to say about the the animal <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about his. I don't know about his gender and stuff like that. You know. He, well, he, he came yeah, up with this whole. No, he's a total <laughs> fucking sexist. He believed that people had like interior feminine spirits and a lot mm-hmm. of good fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck is whispering my name? Buttress. Is that my animal? <laughs> it's my animus telling me to go chop some wood outside. I will not. <laughs> I will not chop wood. <laughs> yeah, fuck him. He's just another like fucking hippie. So this is my Nazi. first time on a call. Like, does it always get this crunk, or is that? Just- I think it. No. I think it has to do with me. I'm 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 drunk but, and ra- I'm drunk and racist, sort of like my wait, fucking. But you were spitting facts. Yeah. You are. You are, and that's righteous <laughs> anger, and that's what we like to see here. Righteous anger, you know. But, oh, dread went away too. Yo, what's up? I just got back from Subway and the wine store. But, uh, nice. Well, you know, I think everyone's entitled to their opinions here. I mean, of course, as long as they're not like abusive, which I don't think anybody became here tonight. No. I, I, hope, I hope I wasn't being abusive. No, absolutely no. not. I think everyone's good, and we should all try to be nice to each other. 
you know well also, i'm nice like, we... you mean just like <laughs> speaking softly i mean not not say and fuck you and we hope people die and stuff even if we do let's keep that those ideas to ourselves people can we can we have like a handshake like an internet no. handshake between mm -mm. come on shake hands mm -mm. Broop, broop, oh wait is there wrong. kind of uh bang bang uh, have i missed out on on something important here have we <sighs> not really i was to trying to I was trying to reframe the argument and take it away a little bit from our specifics and talk about how mm -hmm. we can try to glean useful ideas from people that have yeah. overall potentially questionable like morals or something. Mm. And we were talking about Hitler, mm -hmm. like could Hitler have yeah. done good for certain people, you know? But what is <laughs> <possible>? for um, <laughs> right? Possible. Yeah, Hitler apparently Hitler. was was like pro fucking race. Ham Hamler's oh. reproductive rights position. Mm -hmm. um. But it's interesting to talk about, isn't it? And honestly, like, um, <laughs> I I love talking about these things. I love having you know heated, intense debates with people about these things. Because you know what? It's like at the end of the day, like I fucking like love and respect all of you guys for even wanting to have the discussion. <laughs> So, facts. you know, facts. Mm -hmm. Love and respect it's, it's, yeah. it's cool. Thank you and it. sometimes, you know, I play devil's advocate just to just to move things along. Girl. I feel that. I feel that. And that's, yeah. that's fine. That's fine, too. And I, I, I honestly, I any sort of like sort of aggression and stuff like I, I regret as far as like being like overly aggressive and stuff as far as like the conversation is. Oh, like dude, I, said, I love I, it. I, we were like all yelling. Look, like I said, we were like, all I get, rude. I get, Everyone was I get, being rude. I'm the only one that needs to hold myself to a standard. I, well, you I all have I, to listen I, to me because I'm the boss. Look, I think I get. I don't I, make you stop. <laughs> I think I get overly aggressive gotcha. about it because I'm used to being talked over about it. You yeah, know what same. I mean? Same here. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. No, I, I get mean, it. I get I, it. So I didn't I mean to talk. No, I didn't it's mean to talk to, talk over you oh, about sorry. like I didn't mean to talk over you about Jordan Peterson and stuff like that because I definitely want to hear. Oh, uh, dude, look. I definitely, I definitely, I definitely want to hear. I definitely want to hear like a different perspective about it than what I, what I watch on him, what I interpret about him online. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess like for me personally, I, I found him before that whole trend thing came about maybe like a year and a half before that i was watching his maps of meaning lectures on youtube and that was kind of um it was supplementing my um educational experience of nature and mm -hmm. and and young and i'm like these types of philosophers and i thought you know wow i i'd never really seen somebody take these kinds of abstract concepts <laughs> and pull them down to um a level that you know people could understand and integrate into their daily lives and i thought like wow that's fuck that's like that's awesome dude like i really i respected that and after the whole trans scandal happened i found myself pulling back a little bit because you know i i didn't want to say you know openly i you know i support this guy i like this guy because that he represents so many different things to so many different people. Girl. Um, yeah. But, mm -hmm. you know, I totally understand um, the criticisms that people have of him, but I think, like, for me personally, I always um, lean towards getting, you know, a bit more on the defensive side of him just because I feel like, as somebody who grew up without a father, um, a lot of his insights into masculinity and kind of how that how that plays out in the world or at least you know how how we're playing that game how we've all kind of decided to play that game and i guess you could call that patriarchy or you know whatever you want to call that um how that how that influences us um 
you know, as kids brought up in those kinds of societies. And he helps me a lot at a time when, you know, that kind of psychological discourse, like that helps me so much at a time when I was so lost. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's, you know, it's always talked about in, um, you know, in the context of, oh, he's helping these males, you know, these young males, these young lost males. But, you know, um, for me personally, like, yeah, white males as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's and you know, I, I, I grew up with, with an Indian mother, and you know, I'm female, and um, I found so much of what he had said in his lectures and in his book, Maps of Meaning. Um, not that I would take it as gospel, not that I would say, oh, this is a Bible, like this is exactly what it, it was just a spring point for, you know, uh, a lot of different, you know, ideas from me, and I found it. Yeah, sure. Do you feel like maybe as an Indian female, like you feel extra defensive of this because you feel like it's your right to like this, and people who don't have the same kind of perspective into it as you are telling you you should feel differently? Because, like, not trying to sound accusatory, but like, I feel like I encounter this sometimes. Like, I just have this fucking affinity for like the comedian Andrew Dice Clay, for example. And like, oh, I love him. Try to I love him. people try to tell me he's not a genius, and everything that I I thought was intentional about his comedy is actually yeah. him just thinking like rape humor is hilarious and he really does hate women and I just refuse to believe it and I will defend his genius to the grave even though I don't yeah. even know what I believe anymore. <laughs> Stop yeah, with the yeah. whispers, you're driving me crazy. But I feel <laughs> like I'm I'm partially like really defensive of him because I came to this perspective on my own as a woman who like it seems to be his own female fan and like I thought that yeah. he was like doing something subversive and amazing so now I yeah. like cling to him extra hard and I just refuse to hear the criticism you know do you feel like yeah. you relate to that at all um I can definitely see where you're coming from and I think this is also you know it kind of bleeds into the argument of you know can you separate the art from the artist kind of thing um which church and state I, I think right, we were like a really speaking about that a little when you were in subway mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah when you're in a queue when you're in a queue for the subway and stuff going through okay, the well, turnstiles going through the turnstiles <laughs> I, right, I don't i don't know exactly the separation what you're of about and state. But, <laughs> well, what yeah, we said I was, really I want to hear if you agree with this. What we said ultimately was like, you can't ever truly separate the art from the artist because you can't divorce yourself from what you know about someone. It will impact your opinion of them and their art, yeah. most likely in most circumstances. But what's variable ultimately is the degree to which it impacts it, you know? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 I agree with that. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, 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 yeah,